As I said, uh, Tony Franklin, uh, I am the solution specialist with the innovation and business development team at Microsoft. And so I am one of the only Microsoft employees that gets to have their job here at the School of the Future. It's a, it's a great honor, it's mm -hmm. an eye-opening experience. Um, and I'm joined today by my colleague here within the school, and I'll, I'll let her introduce herself. My name is Robin Walker. I'm the development coordinator for the School of the Future. I've been with the program since the year before it opened, so I can give you a lot of historical background and information like that. Um, one of my main functions is to work with Tony on the partnerships, uh, but I also do Title I and Special Ed, so if you have any questions about that. Mm, okay. This is, of course, uh, a multi-touch, multi-input device, meaning now we can move away from the, the uh, the typical one person drives the experience on a computer or even a laptop or even a tablet and we can move into a more interactive group learning environment and then we'll move on from here because I think that you're seeing some of the relevance here. Um, this is awesome. Let's see, do we want to go virtual view or cell explore? Virtual view or cell explore. Okay, virtual view. Now, talking about how applications can be built specific to a classroom environment. Here we have virtual view in which right now it doesn't seem like I can do much. but having this application triggered by a student ID. So imagine, learner walks up to the surface, they've got to complete, assignment for uh, complete an assignment for class. Today, oh that goodness. class happens to be on the, the heart. And so, as they move through and they choose their patient, so to speak, they can click on the heart, and then um, they can interact with a 3D version of the heart. You know, how much would it cost to get, you know, <laughs> Pig hearts, or even pigs for biology, right? Like, how much would it, how much does that cost the school year after year after year, class after class, to come in here and do dissection, where now we can do it in a 3D and, how and virtual many environment. Learners fail the class because they don't want to do the dissection. Ah, and here yeah, we can even manipulate with our hands, <laughs> of course. And pick this up and reading your card. Exactly. So the bite tags on the back of the card recognize me as a particular user, and data can be tied to the different uh, bite tags that are in the back of that. But it goes beyond just looking at the heart. Um, we're studying, uh, you know, stints and, and, and what that's, what's that going to do for the heart. So maybe we'll, we'll add a stint in here. And then our interactive keyboard right here will allow us to type our notes. Meanwhile, I'm over here mm -hmm. reviewing and, you know, we can rotate this around and move on. And so um, as, as you leave here today, it's these types of opportunities that our learners will have access to. And we've already seen, you know, autistic support learners flop to this table and start interacting with one another. You, you, you can't buy that in a book, right? Um, so if you're going to have technology in an environment, let's make sure that it's relevant. Let's make sure that it, you know... And this is called, what's the full name of it? Microsoft Surface. Microsoft Surface. Yes. Tony, I'm sorry if you for so long already asked this. What's this tied, is this tied into SMS, uh, any student management system? It can be. And so there's actually, oh gosh, uh, that, since you asked that, there's actually an application. No, it's, actually, it's a great question. Um, Very interesting. Uh, you, could, you could go out on the internet. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And let's see if this one is actually working. I can't remember if this one might get an error here, but let's see. Uh, I forget which one of my learners. There we go. And so if you imagine an application that could tap into a student management system, right? And, and pull data, grades, digital portfolio, tests, whatever. Um, absolutely. Again, Windows Vista in the back end, uh, web-based applications, you name it, developed on the platform, easy to integrate into other back end systems. Absolutely. A library with no books. We need Kindles. They, uh, they need they Kindles, need Kindles, Kindles and books. We'll get, we'll get a drink on the way home. Thinking of, of, you know, in the food court, learners are going to come and they're going to plug in their laptop. So you'll see, so they'll have the whole thing, everything. So they can come in here and interact with one another. And they can open spaces, you know, collaborative spaces, so there's no defined area that they need to be in when it's lunchtime. You know, they try to keep them in here, but they recognize that this whole area can be... So they can go on any kind of part of this area. Catch the um, seating with the mm -hmm. This is the uh, performance pavilion. Definitely, we wanted to think a little bit differently about this space. As you can see, it's a nice space, but um, what really makes this space different are the two rooms that you see here that are turned around right now. These are our 
rotating classrooms. And so it turns a space of about 200 plus seats into a space of about 400 plus seats. Um, these rotate on hydraulics 180 degrees, and we'll, we'll walk through and see the classroom on the other side. But what we would say about this space is that the most expensive place in the building is usually the, the least used. And so we find different ways to utilize the space, whether it's for class and, of course, whether for performances. Um, we walk through a set of doors upstairs which can be completely locked off and blocked off from the rest of the building. So this particular area of the building can be used by the community um, when the, the entire school is still closed. Um, that was definitely the idea was to make this a community school in which we do run a lot of community programs out of the building. How often do you actually... Um, there's a seminar around. class held in here once a week and then science educators at the discretion. Maybe a couple times a week. Oh, so this actual classroom is it used all the time? It's not used every day. Okay. It's used once a week for sure and then the science educators rotate. Gotcha. And, but how often do you actually oh, turn it around? Turn around to the auditorium. Um, we use it for every assembly that we have, which right. is usually once a month. Um, outside performances, gotcha. plays. Oh, so pretty often then. Yeah, it's oh. actually used. Different classrooms. They can configure them any which way they, they really want to. Um, it is entirely up to the educator to figure out how they want to have their the classes configured. <laughs> Thanks a lot. I know. about a library budget. Well, keeps the students from doing something. Also keeps the teachers. This is standard equipment in every classroom. Audio enhancement, DVD, VCR, wireless and wired projector, as well as the document camera in the ceiling that does 360 degrees, as well as a great zoom. All controlled from a web GUI, um, so all of these things can be operated from a laptop, just plug into the network or connect to the network. The projector, same way, it can be set to wireless. A lot of our educators just plug in. Um, 